tell you a lot about the studio, didn't he? Tony? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great to start with. I mean, really, really fine. We knew like half the band. Gary had never recorded in his life, nor Kerry. I mean, most of them Mart- had, had, had limited experience because we only made singles and really they were produced by other people. And we didn't know anything about mixing and, you know, I mean, hell. It's <laughs> and the most we, ever, most we ever recorded on was like, I think, once on 8-track. The other things were like, either in mono. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's really, you know, straight, under, quite straight onto the cylinder. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was that's why it was done in those days, in the 68 and the 67. But there must have been an awful lot of planning because the, the first album still is so good. I mean, there, there's certainly some faults with it, but, but for a first album from a band who obviously was doing much different material, it's, it's, uh, it's really good. And you still perform a lot of the, the songs from that first album, which is certainly a, a sign that the material holds up. Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I, I think that... Um, well, there's ch- our general sort of like trend in writing is, is always kept, hopefully, a, a reasonable standard. It has for us anyway. We wouldn't put anything on, down on an album which we didn't like. Well, that's not really, quite, that's not really <laughs> quite true. Because obviously we reflect on things and think, well, that could have been a bit better. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, 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 it's a good, a quite a good album. Then Acquiring a Taste was uh, really a much better album because you, you guys seem to be... Uh, the, the band seemed to be getting much tighter and you getting yeah, out of well, the studio in, much in a better. way we didn't really know what we were doing when we made Acquiring the Taste I mean we weren't aware of the kind of album we were making it was very experimental I mean more than on any other record like before or since it's um because like Tony Visconti started taking the back seat and leaving us to it I mean we, were, we weren't about weird ways of recording just like for instance on, on one track I think we started off with um a click track mm-hmm. and um some instrument that wouldn't eventually be used, and they were just built up on layers, and we just, it was really an experiment of using the studio. And luckily, like, Tony was free and easy, and he let us do this, and just guide us where he could. And then, we, you know, we got to a position where we, we found we didn't really need a producer, because it just, I think, led to conflict eventually. We had set ideas by then. Well, in that, in that Tony was well into sort of um, T-Rex, I don't know if anyone was aware, in New Mexico. Of T Rex, oh, sure. yeah. yeah. Well, and, and he was doing Bowie at the time, and, as well. and he, was, he was doing Bowie. He was, in fact, during the first album, he was he was doing that um, Man Who Sold the World, Man sold the world album, mm. and he was very much into that that thing. And at, at that time, I quite liked David Bowie then, and it, because he was he was pretty original. Yeah, really. good songwriter. I mean, good songwriter. Quite original. At that time, I think you know. Mm-hmm. And for the time, he was he was pretty good. And, and but Tony Tony Visconti was getting more involved in that, and mm. he, he wasn't he didn't really quite understand where where we were sort of going. And we we decided to part company. It was quite mutual and it's quite amicable. You know, he's he's still mm-hmm. quite friendly. We decided to produce our own albums after that. Mm-hmm.